They are pretending like the problem is solved, that the water is clean. In fact, they're even explicitly telling people who are asking whether or not the Red Hill uh, contamination has been sorted out. They're saying, yes, it's fine. The water is tested clean. And just last, last month, uh, a Kanaka mother uh, with a, a family of 12 uh, who moved in recently, she showed me pictures just in mid-December of, of her, her baby, who's not even two years old, just covered in rashes. And it's, 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 it's heartbreaking and it's infuriating. And this, meanwhile, the landlords are telling this family and so many other families like, like hers that, that this water is not the cause of it. Her hair is falling out. Her, her daughter's hair is falling out. Uh, her, her, her whole family has, has all sorts of gastrointestinal problems and, and headaches and, and brain fog, which is highly consistent with exposure to petroleum hydrocarbons in your water uh, through bathing or drinking. And, and you know, th there wouldn't be so many people picking up this water from us every month if the water was clean. Uh, th there wouldn't be people like just not even showing pictures. They're, they're just showing their bodies to us as they walk out of the car showing that, there, that, 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 that their proof is their bodies, that, that this, this water is not safe, right? And it's, it's because no matter how many millions of gallons of water the, the US military flushed out of that system every single day, it's, it's sticky, jet fuel is, is sticky. And, and, and it's sticking to the lining of, of the pipes most likely and, and, to, and to the fixtures. And unless they spend you know, the hundreds of millions of dollars or potentially billions of dollars in infrastructure spending it would take to actually replace those pipes, it's 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 not going to be clean, and that's and that's also just assuming that the contamination plume, you know, isn't moving anymore, right? And it still could be, and and so, and also just going back to to the PFAS contamination, right? Uh, uh, Hilani had mentioned just like it's a it's a whole other ball game, right? Because when when it comes to TPHD, what you measure, it, you know, the, those those compounds in jet fuel that are poisonous, that's measured in the parts per billion. And, and they were they were ingesting in the hundreds of thousands of parts per billion, and that's terrible, right? But PFAS, what's considered within the realm of acceptable, is nothing. Um, and, and the EPA has actually dramatically scaled down uh, what they consider to be a safe amount. And it's in the quadrillions, parts per quadrillion. So, I mean, uh, imagine, imagine a, a one drop of water in a swimming pool. That's like one part per billion. Um, imagine like 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools and one drop in there, that's a part per trillion. And so, so that's how little PFAS is required to actually contaminate a water source. And, and like Heilani mentioned, you know, just like on the anniversary uh, of uh, the one year anniversary of, of the Red Hill jet fuel spill, they spilled 1300 gallons of AFFF concentrate. And this is concentrate, just imagine orange juice, right? Like it's 3% military spec comp concentrate. You're supposed to match that with 97 parts water before you even make it firefighting foam. So that spilled directly above our, our aquifer. And, and we just have to hope that it's somehow not going to follow the path that water has followed for thousands of years um, in, in, into, into the aquifer, right? So that, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the issue that we're dealing with right now is, is this ongoing contamination with jet fuel and then this bomb that has already dropped and is kind of like exploding in slow motion. And we just hope we're not in the blast radius.